Welcome guys. Today we're going to talk about physical properties and chemical properties of matter. So let's start by talking about how can we describe matter? How can we talk about it and uh, in a way that other people can understand it? So a physical property is described as a characteristic that can be observed or measured without changing what the substance actually is. So example, I, I can look at the color of this pencil, I can look at its texture without changing the pencil. However, if I burnt the pencil, the fact that the pencil can burn is a, called a chemical property, but I can't see that until I'm actually in the process of converting this into something new. So a physical property, something we can see without changing the substance itself into something new. So for example, if we talked about something like mercury, mercury is a shiny metal at room temperature, will be a liquid. So that means that um, we could describe its texture, we could describe its color, we can describe that it will take any shape because it's a liquid without doing a chemical change and altering what it is. It's still mercury while we're making those observations. Here's another example, mica. It's a mineral, you can dig it up in the ground. Um, here's a sample I have with me. You can see it's, it's pretty clear. Its texture is smooth, it almost feels like plastic. And you can see when I pull on it, it kind of comes apart in sheets. So how it splits could also be a physical property that we would describe. Here are some more technical terms that we could use. Viscosity means basically like how resistant is it going to be in flowing? Like honey, for example, when you pour it, it does not pour really cleanly, right? It's going to take a long time. Maple syrup would also be very viscous. Motor oil is very viscous. It's a high viscosity. Conductivity, uh, pans and metal, obviously pans made of metal, is because they allow heat to flow through them. We make wires out of metal because they allow electricity to flow through them. They're good conductors. Malleability is another physical property. It just uh, means that basically you can hammer it into shape without breaking it. Mica would not be malleable, but many metals are. Hardness is a trait that's used to describe things like minerals. Um, this is Mohs scale of hardness. And it's based on what can scratch what. For example, if the mineral can scratch your fingernail, I think that gives it a hardness rating of about two, uh, is the, considered the hardness of your fingernail. And so you scratch different minerals on each other and on other substances like your fingernail or on a, uh, I think a steel nail, and you compare things based on how hard they are, okay? The temperature at which something melts, the temperature at which something boils is also a physical property, as well as density. So a physical property, you can only observe it um, w without changing it. A chemical property, by the time you've observed it, it's gone through a chemical change and it's become something new. Um, so it can only be observed while it's in the process of changing into something new with new properties. Examples of this would be burning my pencil. The pencil's flammable, <laughs> okay? Uh, paper is flammable. And once we burn the paper, it is no longer paper. It no longer has the same physical and chemical properties that it did to begin with. Uh, another example is reactivity. Does it react with vinegar, like baking soda and vinegar? You know how it bubbles, okay? That is a chemical property of baking soda is that it will react with uh, vinegar. So, Sometimes kids, uh, it's helpful for them to think about chemical properties as a future tense of what will happen under certain conditions. So 
why do we care? Why do we care about physical and chemical properties? Well, they can be really helpful in allowing us to identify things. In particular, uh, a use for this would be a crime scene. So imagine that like a white powder is left at a crime scene and there are so many different types of white powders. You think even in your kitchen, like you spill sugar and salt and baking soda and you can't tell which one it is. So one way to determine what it is, is if you know the physical and chemical properties of sugar, you can run some tests on this unknown thing to see if it matches sugar. Uh, that could then be used to link a suspect to the crime scene. Okay. Other examples is my dad used to work for Chrysler and his job was to take apart other cars from other companies and look at their electrical system and figure out why they did what they did. Uh, and as part of that, he needed to figure out what the substances were made of. And if needed, they would have to run physical and chemical property tests on the substances to figure out what it is. And that would help them to figure out why the competitor did what they did. Another reason that it's helpful to know physical and chemical properties is that it helps you make good decisions about what you're building with. For example, in the 1970s, there was a lot of children who got severely burned and had to be hospitalized because of the pajamas they were wearing when they were in a house fire. Um, certain types of pajamas will melt against the child's skin and cause extreme burning. And so um, that was a chemical property of the pajamas that has since been outlawed that we can't make pajamas, kids pajamas in particular, out of that particular material because if they were in a fire, they get so badly burned. If you were going to build a building, you better well know the properties of the material you are building with. For example, most metals will expand and contract with heat. And if you don't know how much it's going to expand or contract and you didn't allow for it in your building design, that whole building might collapse. Similarly, if you are building a deck at your house, you want to know how much those boards are going to expand. If you put them too close together, they're going to crumple up. So it's very helpful to know physical and chemical properties of material.